My name is Penny and this is Penny's Art Emporium. So today, as you can see, I would like to do a lovely little fluffy cat and I'd like to do it in um, the fluid art technique that I've been developing um, since I first did one a year ago. So the first one I did was a lovely little fluffy bunny and that was video 129. Um, and I want to do the little cat in the same kind of colours as the bunny. Um, I've got some lovely pastel colours to do a balloon dip base. It's for the same person, it is for a present, so I want them to be able to match together. So I've got my balloons and I've got my pastel colours for the base and the white. Um, so I will do that bit first. And then what I want to do is similar to what I did in my video 150, which was my cute little fluffy dog, which was a portrait painting. So this one is also more of a portrait painting. Um, and what I did with that was I got the photograph and I made a stencil so that all the features would go in the right kind of place um, and did the background first and then started to completely fill the centre with the colours of the dog that I did. So with the cat I want to do the same kind of technique, I'll have a stencil and I've picked out some really lovely colours for the cat. In the photograph it doesn't show how warm the colour is, there is some sort of almost gingery golden kind of colours it's not quite as grey tabby as it looks in the photograph. The printer distorts the colours a little bit. So I have picked out some nice metallic colours. Um, titanium gold, 24 karat gold, um, champagne gold. I've got some matte colours of sienna and burnt sienna. Um, I've got some sand which is matte and some buff titanium which is a kind of creamy colour. I've got some flat kind of greys and I've got some black as well. I've got a little bit of chartreuse green for the eyes which I think will be very very pretty. Um, and I've got my Amsterdam white so I think that's kind of most of them. I've got a bit of portrait pink just for the inside of the ears. So we will see how I get on with that. And hopefully, by the time I'm finished, it might resemble this lovely little cat a little bit. So we'll see how I get on. So uh, I'll put it on to hyperlapse for you and we'll see how that goes. So here is this stencil. I find it's a really good way to just get a rough idea of where all the features are going to go and I'm just using a dry brush with just a little bit of paint on just to give a rough outline of where everything will be in the finished painting. It's also a good way of making sure that it fits nicely on the canvas as well. So I'm trying to do it so that the cat is quite central in the canvas. And you can see already that shows a good idea of where everything's going to go. And now I'm going to do my background first. This is Amsterdam White with Floetrol and water. And all my paints will be mixed with Floetrol and water to make them really quite runny and fluid. And I will do my edges first now because I always like those to be really neat and tidy right from the start. And now I get to add my lovely colours. These are the metallic colours um, with some gold, some pink, some peppermint, some blue, some lavender, some pearl white and coral which is a different colour for me to add this time. And these balloon dips just mix all that paint together and make just really lovely patterns where the metallic paint will shine through underneath from the white and then those edges make sure that those are really nice and tidy again 
So now that I've done that background, um, I'm going to start on the main cat. And to start with, I'm just roughly putting in the colours around where I think that they will go. So I've got some lovely colours here. I've got the pearl white and the white. I've got titanium gold. I've got sand, which is a matte colour. I've got the metallic silver. This is a nice lustrous black and pink. And that is just flat grey and gold. Titanium gold. Champagne gold. So just some beautiful colours. And I'm just really putting them down in the rough kind of area of where I think they're going to go. I'm looking at the photograph and I'm just trying to get the colours in the right places that the actual cat has. And then with my palette knife now, I'm just blending all of those colours together to make really lovely fluffy fur. And I'm going to continue on with that. I'm going to continue adding colours. I'm going to continue blending with my palette knife, making it all nice and furry. Keep adjusting the colours according to the markings on the photograph of the cat and reshaping as I go. So because the um, paint is very fluid, it does move a lot on the canvas. It expands um, and it sometimes goes where you don't want it to go. So it is a case of just reassessing it the whole time and reshaping it. And it can be really difficult to get the paint to go where you want it to go. And it can be really difficult to get it with the fur going in the right direction and the shape staying how you want it. But I really like the technique and I just like the way it looks when it's finished. So his little nose will be less furry than the rest of his face and body. So I've got to try to get the nose so that it doesn't just look really, really furry. Um, and the shape of the eyes I tend to do the main eyes and the features last so that they don't move and they don't expand too much. So I will let you carry on watching how that develops and we'll see the wet results in a little while.
So here is this little cat. It's had a little while to dry, um, a good half an hour or so, and it has taken me quite a few hours just fiddling around really after I'd done the main video, just trying to get his eyes right, which will need a little bit more alteration when it is dry. Um, and just really trying to get the markings right because it's a real cat. I just wanted to try to get the colours in the right place. But you can see his fur is looking very fluffy and furry. And uh, the metallic colours, particularly in that background, I'm really quite excited about those. It does look really nice and you can see those coming through. And then the cat itself is a mixture of the matte, the satin and the metallic colours that will glisten in the light. So you never know exactly what that's going to look like until it's completely dry. So I'm really looking forward to that. I reckon it will take a couple of days to dry and then I'll be able to just adjust those eyes to make them perfect. I've used a chartreuse green from Arteza for those eyes, which is a beautiful metallic colour. So that should look lovely. And I'll just show you the picture that I've been working on, which is this one. And then there's another picture of a different pose, just to get an idea of the kind of colours that he is. So he's a lovely little cat. So I'll let you see that when it is completely dry and I've done the eyes. So bye for now. So here is this little cat. He had a couple of days to dry and I've just finished off his face. I did just tidy up those eyes quite a lot, make sure that they were relatively symmetrical. And I tidied up his nose as well, just so that he looked quite sweet. Um, and I'm really happy with his face now. Um, I've added some whiskers. And apart from that, a little bit of white on his ears, just for that white fur. And uh, he's looking very sweet now. I could fiddle for ages. His eyes take such a long time. Um, with the eyes, I'm terrible with the eyes. It always takes me absolute hours to try to get them right. But I'm happy with them now. And I will leave this a few weeks and it will have a satin varnish on. So I'll probably show you that when that has that on actually as well. Um, because it's a gift, so I don't need to give it for a few weeks. And I'll show you the original. So this is his colouring, which you can see has got some warm tones in it. Um, my cat might have a few more warm tones than the actual photograph. And in this one, you can't see the warm tones much at all, just on his little cheeks there. So that was the kind of expression and pose I was going for. And that is what I've actually got. And what I will do, actually, I will turn the light off. Because if I do that, it will just show you a little bit. Just reach for the light switch. <laughs> right, if I turn that off, it shows you those metallic details. And uh, this is just the natural light in there. Um, and I always like with my paintings that they have that just love, lovely kind of two-tone effect so that as you walk past it, different areas catch the light, which is why I use those metallic paints as well as the matte ones. And it goes over the edge a little bit as well, which I quite like. There. So I will take some photos when it's got the satin varnish on and those will be my finishing ones but that won't be for another couple of weeks um, until he's dried and cured. So thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you again next time. Bye bye.